Hey, Suave here. The chances weren't likely that in 2006, when I happened to visit a secondhand shop, browsing no more than a dozen books mixed together on a shelf, that I would find an already well-worn copy of Stutelmu Nihei's debut series, Blam. I was astonished and curious. At the time, the most dystopian media I had exposure to was grounded around the reality that humanity somehow survived. I hadn't considered a reality where they hadn't, where there was nothing but cold, lifeless metal in every direction. Every turn of the page was exhilarating. Watching this stranger wandering around the empty back rooms of a never-ending city, seeking to fulfill an impossible task. The art is dark and the shapes are vague by design. Because there is no apparent design of the megastructures, and there is no deeper meaning as to why the builders continue building upon it the way they do. They just follow their programming as they were designed to do, despite how needless it's become. I find a horror in knowing that when you look up, somewhere out there, the structure continues. It's just a matter of where, and that you're never truly free of it. And we aren't exactly told why the world is like this until much later on. There isn't much of a dialogue between many of the characters at all, at least not for very long. Even then, our hand isn't being held, because the Earth we knew isn't even a distant memory. It's like it never existed at all. All we know now is what we need to know to endure this landscape and survive alongside our stranger. Unfortunately, he's looking for us, or at least a human. There's exactly one very rare person that can save the human race, and our stranger is wandering alone in this endless place looking for them. I suppose in a more philosophical and much longer analysis, I could equate the city to our current reality. The builders to a working class of mindless tasking, driven by ever-expanding corporations. Or the silicon life to controlling mass media forcefully shaping and molding us away from our own originality and the safeguard to a more concentrated group seeking to punish other individuals simply for existing. But what I actually wanted to mention about this series is more straightforward in concept. A woman has just woken up. She wanders the halls alone looking for any sign of her companion. But instead, she finds something else. The chances weren't likely that in 1938, when fishermen brought up their haul off the coast of South Africa, that they would find evidence of a living coelacanth. Researchers thought the species had gone extinct 66 million years ago, even now, there's no way of knowing how many are left. Maybe less than a thousand. When the woman discovers the tank, her reaction is quiet astonishment for the creature swimming within it. Of course, she has no reason to even know what a coelacanth is, only that it's alive right before her eyes, enduring in this harsh environment just like she is. It's a perfect example that we are meant to fight tooth and nail to see tomorrow, so that we also endure even another 3,000 years into the future, regardless of what the world looks like then. After this scene, the woman keeps going. She has to, 
and I keep reading. I keep going with her. I feel as if I've never stopped. I've thought about her and the coelacanth almost every day since reading it. They're reminding me to endure. To survive. To keep going. And of course, I could go on for hours just diving into the lore and interpretations of this series. Don't even get me started on the theory of a connected universe between everything the author has made, either. But if you're keen to slow atmospheric settings, minimal explicit exposition, some pretty badass weaponry, and instances of grotesque body horror, and just want to immerse yourself in an empty, hostile world for a while, then Blam might be worth your time. I'd highly recommend it to fans of cybernetic imagery, who are likely already familiar with vaguely explained technologies. But if you're still unsure, I'd recommend checking out the movie. It's an alternate retelling of the story, but perfectly embodies everything about the original in a condensed format. Unfortunately, we don't get to see the coelacanth in the feature film, but that's alright. Overall, the movie is a decent enough compass to determine if you'd really like this niche of the genre at all. And if grungy, claustrophobic environments aren't really your thing, Knights of Cydonia is more akin to a space opera, and Opossums is a snow-covered wasteland. I also recognize that Tsutomu Nihei's work isn't going to be for everyone, but I just wanted to share a bit of what made Blam so special to me, to someone who may not have known about it before now. And if you did already know, or you're familiar with other works like it, let me know what you think. Thank you, again, to my one-off supporters last month. Every little bit helps, and I really appreciate it. I know it's probably idealistic, but I'm going to try to stay ad-free on my channel for as long as I can. I don't believe in crappy energy drinks or shitty mobile games, so I'm relying on those of you that truly enjoy my content to sponsor it. Only if you want to. If you would like a place in the credits of future videos, a behind-the-scenes look with supporter-only posts, and even vote on what content you'd specifically like to see next, or in general just want to support the content I'm working on, links will be in the description below. And that's all I've got today. So until next time, see ya.